Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So I hope you can hear me. I'm not using a mic. Um, I have my old camera and I can't use a mic with this camera and my son has my other camera right now. So I'll just have to make do with what I have, but hopefully the sound is good enough. I'm pretty excited today. I'm gonna to be doing something different, something I've never done before and I've always wanted to. I'm gonna to try to make my own paint. And this is literally mixing it from scratch, not you know buying a quart at Walmart or the hardware store and just mixing some chalk in there to create a chalk paint. This is the actual paint that I'll be applying on a piece of furniture. I looked up a number of recipes and even tried a few different ones, but the one I kind of like the best is the one I'm gonna share with you guys. Again, I'm not really sure is it even gonna turn out, but I think like the texture of the paint at this point I've mixed it. Uh, seems pretty good, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's go out to the shop and I'll show you what I plan to paint. A while back I had gotten this piece off of, I believe, Bargain Hunters Unite or some kind of a Facebook marketplace type of site. Not quite sure what I paid for it. I'm thinking around maybe $20. Um, it's a really pretty piece. All of the drawers uh, slide easily. The first thing I want to do is remove the wooden knobs and clean the piece up. My plan is to get as much of the original kind of reddish stain off of the drawer fronts that I can. I want to keep those like a dark brown color if possible. And then the rest of the piece I would paint probably a charcoal or you know almost black color. I love these little mouse sanders. I have one linked down below in the description box. I've gone through a few of them over the years. Of course, I use a sander a lot, but they are around, I believe, maybe $35, something like that. So worth it to have one. I really like the shape of them. You can get into you know corners and areas on a piece of furniture that you couldn't with a round one. Here I'm using a coarse sandpaper to get rid of the stain. So after bleaching the drawer fronts, I let that dry and I sanded them once more and I was able to get just a little bit more of the stain off, but I think this is as good as it's going to get. I'm going to go ahead and apply a gel stain and the color is chestnut.
So as I'm editing here on our front porch, we have a beautiful rain going on here in Holmes County, Ohio, and it just sounds so nice. I'll give you a quick clip here of what my view is like. Now I'm ready to make my paint, and as I'm editing here, of course, everything is done. But I did have quite the time to get this done. It was harder than I expected. I thought I'm going to be honest with you guys. It took about three tries for me to get this just right. And at the end of the video, I'll explain kind of how it went, or what kind of mistakes I made. That way, if you're not really interested in making your own you know, homemade paint, you don't have to listen to it now. But um, I did want to kind of explain how things went. That way, maybe you can avoid the mistakes that I made. But for now, I'll show you the process I went through on my third try. I started out by pouring a half a gallon of skim milk that was at room temperature. So this had been sitting out of the fridge for quite some time just to get it to you know about room temperature. Poured that into a bowl and I added one cup of distilled white vinegar and stirred that around for just a bit. It actually turned out kind of gross looking, almost like it was curdling the milk. The mixture should be left sitting like this for two hours or more. Um, in my case, I actually let it set overnight. Uh, it just worked better for me. I wasn't ready to start painting that evening, so I just let it set overnight. That seemed to work perfectly fine. After that, you're supposed to strain it using cheesecloth. I didn't have any on hand, so I just used some lace. Uh, that seemed to work fine. I also sprayed the mixture off just a bit using my sprayer by the sink. As the milk mixture was straining in the sink, I poured around a half a cup of lime into a bowl. In my case, I used pickling lime. That was the only lime I had on hand, but any hydrated lime will work. I then gently squeezed the milk mixture. I didn't want all of the water to be squeezed out. It's okay to leave some moisture in there or else it will be too dry. I then stirred this mixture together and surprisingly it started to look like a paint texture. Pretty exciting. I was ready to add my coloring. I had gotten a color pigment from Amazon. It was a whole pack of different colors and the color I'm choosing here is called Charcoal. Uh, the brand is Maypring. Not quite sure am I pronouncing it correctly, but I'll link it down below in case you're interested in it. But as you will find out later on, I did end up going kind of another route with my colorant. So stay tuned for those details. Here I'm adding my colorant just a little bit at a time, making sure to get the correct color. I do remember when I was mixing this, I thought to myself, it's just not turning out as dark as I had hoped. It almost seemed like the more I put in, it came to a certain point where I didn't want to turn it any darker. But I thought I'd give it a shot, apply a coat, see how it looks. You know, sometimes paint tends to get darker as it dries then. For some reason I missed getting this on video, but I added three cups plaster of Paris to this mixture before pouring it into a jar. And I will have the complete recipe down below in the description box. This probably was a little bit confusing to follow along with.
wanted some sort of wording to be on my second drawer from the top, so I used my Silhouette Cameo to cut out a stencil. I uh, went with kind of a Paris design, and this design is available on the Etsy shop in case you're looking for something like this for yourself. In this case, instead of like I often do, just apply a decal to a surface, I'm actually doing the stencil where I'm going to paint the letters in. What I'm using here is some watered-down black chalkboard paint. That was the only black paint I have on hand. And to me it looks a little bit blue right now just compared to maybe the black vinyl. But hopefully once it dries it will be nice and black. And I did want kind of a distressed look for this. That's why I just watered the paint down. It can be kind of faint. I think that will look better. The barn wood boxes beside me here are ready to be shipped out. Some of you may have seen them in a previous video. I had made one for myself and decided to use up all of that wood that I had in the shop, turn them into little boxes like this, and sell them on my Etsy shop. And within that day, I think they were sold out. But since we have been able to make more, we actually had more wood than we thought. So if you missed out on that, make sure to check out the Etsy shop. There's still some available. I was really impressed to be able to get more out of my boards than I thought. It's always a good thing. Now this piece has dried and I'm kind of disappointed. The color isn't as dark as I wanted it to be. Uh, normally when paint dries it actually darkens as it dries. In this case it was the opposite. So I do want a darker shade for this. I mean, it's not a bad color in itself, but it's just not what I had in mind. Um, I wonder what you guys think. Um, I'll bring the camera over here and kind of show you a uh, close up how it looks. I'm really impressed with the coverage it gave. You know, I just applied the one coat and it totally covered all of the, you know, previous color on here. And I love some of the character that it actually brought out. I have one more thing that I'm going to try here. I went to the local hardware and got some actual paint formula from them. Um, I was able to buy it. I got two ounces of it. And this is actually what they mix into paint, you know, to color it. So it's a real, really black, almost like an ink-like product here. But I added some of this into my homemade paint here. I'm going to shake it up and going to apply it to this. And I feel like it's going to be that nice shade of charcoal that I want. So coming in closer here, hopefully you can tell uh, what a good job it did of covering. And I really like the matte finish, and I'm definitely planning on applying wax over this piece. Um, it just makes for such a nice uh, finish then to you know wash off or clean, and it just looks really good too. But just for the bare paint being on here and homemade at that, I think it did a pretty good job.
I decided to line the drawers with this newspaper print wallpaper. We actually have this available on the Etsy shop if you're looking for some like this uh, to work with, but it's really easy. You just spray the back, uh, let it set for just a bit, and then apply it. I thought I'd film my ending out here in my shed. There's some tree trimming stuff going on um, out our driveway. It's kind of loud out there, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had so much fun trying something new like this. In fact, I can't believe I kind of went into my own kitchen and was able to get you know milk and vinegar and pickling lime and mix that together. Of course, I needed the coloring and then the plaster of Paris and create a paint that was able to cover a piece of furniture and look pretty good. I really like the kind of colonial look of it. I feel it just has that old antique -y look. And in fact, it is kind of like I remember some of my grandparents' furniture being like. I know my grandma used to make lime paint and I just feel like this kind of feels the same way. It's maybe not just perfectly even or uh, the tone isn't quite even, but I think that's the character of it. I absolutely love it. I even like to see the brush strokes on it. I don't know, maybe it's just me, I like old things. I wanted to quickly share with you some of the mistakes I made and some of the things I learned in making my own paint. Uh, as I mentioned before, this was my third attempt when it actually ended up turning out okay, but um, I gotta say my first attempt did turn out okay. Um, I mixed everything together, those first three ingredients, the milk, the vinegar, the lime, added the colorant, um, everything turned out great. Uh, the texture was perfect took it out in the shop and did a few practice or test strokes on my piece of furniture and I saw that it would cover nicely, it was easy to apply and I covered my bowl with saran wrap because I knew it would go a little later in the day by the time I had time to actually you know, paint the piece and then hours later when I came out with my brush all ready to start painting, had my camera in tow, I thought I'd record everything I dipped my brush into the bowl and it dried out. The paint was dry. I couldn't believe it. If I was to do, to do that, like cover a bowl with saran wrap with store-bought paint, it would be totally fine for days, even weeks. So there's something with homemade paint. It just dries out really quick. So you want to keep that in mind. Just get it in a airtight container. Um, 
in my case here I used a jar with a lid that you know had a nice seal on there and that way it won't dry out for me now I don't know at this point how long it'll last because this is something new for me but I'll try to update you guys on that but I have some paint left over in my jar and I'm gonna screw that lid on real tight and see how long I could get it to keep so that was one thing I learned and then my second batch, of course, I needed to uh, remake it. I even tried to save my first batch. I uh, even tried heating it up in, you know, on the stove, and that did not work. Ended up tossing it out. And my second batch, I was my mistake. I forgot to add the lime. For some reason, I had all my, you know, milk and vinegar set that had that set overnight. And then I just added my colorant and forgot to add the lime. And I was ready to apply it to my piece of furniture. And I realized something was wrong. And I thought it kind of came to me. I forgot to add my lime. So I just added it then. And it just never really turned out. It was just way too thin. I wasn't even able to spread it. Um, I mean, I was able to spread it. But it was just like a stain almost. Um, the color didn't even really want to stay on my piece of furniture. So that got tossed out too. And my third attempt, I did the exact same thing as my first round. Everything looked okay, but for some reason, this is a mystery to me, I can't really solve this, but for some reason it turned out way too thin. I thought I just did everything right, like my first batch. Every time I made a new batch, I had to run to the store and get another half gallon of skim milk because we don't use that here at home. Uh, so this was another trip to the, I think John had actually gone that time, gotten me another half a gallon of my skim milk and uh, thought I did all the right things and it was just way too thin. To this day, I don't know what I did different. Uh, was it just the way the humidity was on the outside or I have no idea, but I was again just not able to spread it on my piece of furniture. I just wanted to run. Um, didn't even want to dry. It was so weird. So my last resort before just giving it all up was adding some plaster of Paris to my paint because I knew that would probably thicken it, but I wasn't sure was it going to work or not, but it ended up working fine. Um, I added three cups of that into my batch of paint, milk paint that I had, and it just became the perfect texture. In fact, it was so much fun to spread onto that piece of furniture. I just felt like I was using store-bought paint. And I just love the fact that there's no chemicals in there. So I did think about the fact maybe I wouldn't even have to add lime to the paint, being that I did the, you know, added the plaster of Paris. But um, I think I would probably add it because I know somewhere along the line, when I was doing research on making my own paint, I came across an article that said lime is actually really good for the paint. I'm not sure is it to spread it, you know, make so it spreads nice and evenly, or is it kind of a like a preserving agent. But I think if I were to do this again, I would definitely just follow the exact recipe that my third batch uh, turned out to be then. And I will put that recipe down below in the description box. Uh, I'm sure throughout the video here it was a bit confusing at like what did she actually put in there, but I will try to be uh, clear in my description box what all I used because it did turn out beautifully. And I'm sure in the future I may do this again. Um, it was so much fun. I'd like to try new colors. I wonder how white would turn out. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to get to them maybe in a future Q&A. And as far as any other tips on actually applying the paint, I can't really think of anything. Um, I just felt like I was using a store-bought paint when I used it. It was really easy to apply. Um, it didn't dry too quick and yet it dried you know, soon enough for me. Overall, I was just really impressed, I gotta say. I did want to mention quickly the t-shirt that I'm wearing here is a new one I have in my product line available at the Peddler and on their website. Uh, this is for the fall season of course, although you could wear it all year long because I feel like we should always be thankful. But I really like um, the scripture, it's not the full scripture, but it just reminds me to always be thankful for everything. Thanks so much guys for watching, I appreciate all of you, I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!